When you open Prusa Slicer, you can choose the mode you want to use it in depending on your skill level. We're going to choose simple mode for now. We don't want access to advanced settings until we're ready. Keep in mind that Prusa Slicer is very intuitive. And even though there are lots of options for many parameters, as a beginner, we really don't need to go near most of these at all. Once we have our layer height, our filament type and our printer selected, the software will do the work for us. I'm going to open an STL file and show you how you can work with this software. Here's a code hook I've designed. It opens in the same position as it was exported in Tinkercad, but this may not be the best way or the preferred way to print. Let's take a look at some of what Prusa Slicer can do with my design file. First, select the object and choose the Move tool. You can see each arrow represents an axis and you can choose which axis you want to move the object on. Next, we can scale the object. Hold Shift while dragging out and you'll scale uniformly rather than skewing your object. You can rotate your object, again, choosing which axis you want to rotate on. You can also change the orientation of the object by selecting Place on Face. This allows you to choose the face that you want to have placed on the printer bed. The last tool here is the Cut tool. This allows you to split your object in two so that you can print it separately. This is really useful if you're working with overhangs or with objects that you know will struggle to stick to the bed without supports. If we look at this object, you can see the bridge overhang and the round bottom parts on the print bed. There's no way to print this without supports and so it's easier for me to cut it in two and to glue it together after printing. So I select it, click the cut tool and make my selections here to keep both pieces and to perform the cut. As you can see, the bottom part needs to be rotated. So I choose place on face and click. Or I could have done this automatically within the cut tool, as you can see here. Just looking at the options on top, you can add another file, delete, delete all, arrange when working with multiple pieces. And I'll just add some additional files to show you. The arrange function will put the objects in order to ensure optimal printing. You can also split a design with multiple parts so that you can make individual changes to individual pieces. You can copy, and paste objects. Search allows you to find specific settings in the software. And you can adjust the layer height at specific points of your print. I would avoid doing this until you're quite comfortable with 3D printing. And finally, undo and redo. Keep in mind that we're doing all of this in editor view. And in a moment, I'll show you preview. As we look back over to the right of the screen, we can see that we have some of the same options. Here we can move our object, we can rotate, scale and size. Actually, I prefer using this section to input more precise settings than using some of the tools on the left hand side. You can see that we can apply settings to the whole design or specific parts when we have split to objects selected. When we're ready to print, we choose slice now and we can use this slider to give us a preview of our print in reverse order. You can see what each color represents in our legend on the left. And we can also see how much filament the print will use, as well as printing time. There are many ways to reduce printing time, including changing the quality or layer height of the print, reducing scale and changing orientation. Each time you change a setting, make sure to click Slice Now to get the updated preview file. You can switch between Editor View and Preview as needed. And finally, we have options to print supports. You may find that using the brim is enough, Explore the settings here and make sure to slice now to see the most updated preview so that you can make a decision on how best to get the most successful print. When you're ready, export G-code. And this is saved onto your SD card or somewhere else on your computer and then put onto your SD card later on for print on your 3D printer.